Now this this part is going to be on the power rule, and when we have the power rule, that's going to be a power raised to a power. So that means anytime you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you're going to multiply the exponents. Now why does this rule work? And I have um, x to the second to the third. So that means that I have x to the second times itself three times. That's x to the second times x to the second times x to the second. Well, you can actually expand this further and say x times x times x times x times x times x, or you could use your product rule and say x to the six. I have one, two, three, four, five, six x's, so that's why this rule works. So anytime you have a power to a power, you multiply your exponents. There's only going to be one base, so that keep the base part really is, um, doesn't make any sense here because we only have one base, but we're just going to multiply our exponents. So here I have x to the fourth to the fifth. So that's going to be x to the four times five is 20. So x to the 20th. Here I have x to the second to the fifth. That's going to give me x to the 10th for multiplying two times five. Now it's going to get a little harder for number three. I have x to the second to the fourth and, x and y to the third to the fourth. Look at them individually, not just as one big line. Because remember, I have a power to a power. So that means that I'm multiplying the two times the four and the three times the four. I had a student in one of my classes that said it's kind of like a distributive property. It's like you're distributing that four to the two and the four to the three. And if that helps you remember what you're doing, please use that as um, your guide because you are kind of distributing that four to all the numbers or the powers in your, um, x, in your parentheses. So x to the two times four is eight. Y to the three times four is 12. And that's in simplest form. Now, why is it in simplest form? Because I have an X and a Y. I don't have the same base, so I can't go any further. Now, number four is one of the trickiest uh, examples that my students have because this five doesn't have an exponent, so everybody forgets about it. I'm distributing this two to everything on the inside, all the exponents on the inside of the parentheses, even the numbers itself. So if the number does not have an, an exponent with it already, remember it has understood one. So this is like five to the first. So I'm gonna have one times two, so that's gonna be five to the second. And for my x, three times two is six. Now remember what I said about numbers raised to powers. You don't wanna leave it in that exponent form. So that's five times itself. So five times five is 25. And six, x to the 6 is in simplest form. So 25x to the 6. All right, we're going to do the same thing for number 5. And number 5 also has a number. I'm going to put that little power up there. So that's going to be negative 2 to the third power because 1 times 3 is 3. I'm going to put my little distributive um, arrow there. And then x to the 3 times 4, so that's 12, y to the 3 times 2, which is 6, and what exponent does z have? Does z have an exponent? No, it doesn't have anything, so it's an understood 1 as well. So remember, if it is an understood 1, you're multiplying z to the 1 times 3 power, so that's going to be 3. So I had to distribute this 3, this exponent on the outside, to all the exponents on the inside, even the ones that didn't have them, because remember, they're understood ones. And so I have negative 2 to the 3rd, x to the 12th, y to the 6th, and z to the 3rd. Now, this isn't in simplest form until I finish this. And I'm just going to come over here so you can see it in expanded form. This is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And so this is going to give me a positive 4 times negative 2, which gives me a negative 8. So negative 8, x to the 12th, y to the 6th, z to the 3rd is in simplest form. Now number 6 has two variables on the inside of the parentheses, both with an understood 1. So I'm just going to put little 1s up here. So I'm going to have x to the 5th times y to the fifth, because 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 5 is 5, and these variables are not the same, so it's in simplest form. Now we have a new rule called the zero power rule. 
And our zero power rule is when you have anything raised to the zero power. So anything raised to the zero power is one. Now why does that make any sense? Well remember we just did the quotient rule. So if I had the variable over itself, this would be x to the fourth um, over x to the fourth. I keep the base, I subtract the exponents. Four minus four is zero. Anything raised to zero power is one because when you divide a number into itself, that reduces to one. It cancels out or reduces to one. So anytime you have a big group of numbers in parentheses raised to the zero power, you're going to have one. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many numbers, it doesn't matter how big they are. If you have a whole group of things in parentheses raised to the zero power, your answer is one. Now this one, I said anything raised to the zero power is one. So this two to the zero power is gonna be one. This three to the zero power is one. So I'm gonna have one plus one and my answer is two. This example is very tricky. A lot of students mess up and just say one is your answer. But remember, if you have anything to the zero power plus something else to the zero power, that's gonna give you one plus one, which gives you two. So be very cautious. Numbers three and four, I want y'all to see how different they are. This one only has x as the base for the exponent zero, and this whole thing is in parentheses raised to the zero power. So this is actually five times zero, I mean x to the zero power. Anything raised to the zero power is one. So this is five times one, which is five. This example, everything's to the zero power, so your whole answer is one. All right. Now, um, at the very bottom of this page, I put a helpful hint. This is actually from your e-textbook, and this just reminds you of the difference between um, when you have a negative in parentheses squared or a negative without parentheses, and then this is the order of operations that we talked about. So this is just a helpful hint to remind you on how to work these more difficult type problems. If you have any problems with your homework or your on your um, Exponent rules, let me know.